Nearly 70% of Brits are proud to call themselves monarchists. And one can't help but wonder if this is partly due to Meghan Markle. Her effervescence is a breath of fresh air into one of Britain's most rigid institutions. The Markle sparkle has not only boosted superficial things, like sales of dresses worn by the Duchess, but her influence has also inspired churches to welcome new preachers after Reverend Curry's rousing royal wedding sermon and also reminded us of the women of Grenfell and our shared humanity. However, I think it's her recent brilliantly bold feminist speech in New Zealand that is perhaps making the most waves. She celebrated 125 years of female suffrage, highlighting that New Zealand was the first country to grant women the vote, a fact that I and many others didn't know. At a time when President Trump has more or less filed for divorce from the special relationship, the marriage of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry keeps that union alive. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> Meghan is a marvel and she's bringing the monarchy into the 21st century and I love it. Hey. <laughs> I saw you. You were completely soppy away. there, actually. <laughs> that, 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 that's, you're talking, you know, the irony of that speech, which was only about two and a half minutes long. Um, <laughs> uh, she didn't, and she didn't say anything that people haven't said before. But the, the irony of that speech was that if you ask most people to quote something she said they wouldn't be able to, but they would be able to tell you the dress, the price of the dress, the designer. So, because that's what people are looking at with me. You're saying she's changed things. She's actually changed nothing. The monarchy has accommodated her. That, that's, that's what's happened. They, are, they have accommodated that's her. Good they've thing. accommodated that's what I'm her. Saying. Yeah, they've it's accommodated her. Yeah. They've accommodated, but she didn't make it happen. The monarchy has modernised. They have accommodated her class. She's the first working class person ever to marry into the royal family. She's the first biracial person to be in the royal family. And also, they relaxed other rules for her, like, you know, she was the first person ever to be invited to Sandringham for. Christmas as a fiancé, a, a courtesy that wasn't afforded to Kate or Diana. But, you know, she hasn't changed anything, and maybe she will change something at some point. But let's never forget, it was Diana who changed the monarchy big time. She just didn't blow the winds of change. She, she sent, a, she sent a, 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 tornado. A, a tornado through it. And, and, and she did it... She did it with stuff that matters. Me Meghan hasn't done any of that yet. You never forget Diana's well, work. Hang on. Never forget Diana's work on HIV and AIDS. First person to ever hold the hand of someone with AIDS. Cause landmines. We landmines, mm -hmm. uh, her eating disorders, leprosy. She changed everything, but she did it and it cost her dearly. Now, Meghan, I, you know, she is saying what she's saying about feminism, and yes, it's yes, she's saying it. But you have to, you have to ask yourself whether That's another two and a half minutes. You, <laughs> okay, you have to ask yourself whether half, she should be saying it because the royal, fa the whole point of the monarchy is supposed to be neutral. Okay. No. So, no well, let me ask you a question. No. The question is, yes. what would you say if, say, Prince Charles started to campaign for uh, against immigration, uncultural immigration? What would you say? Well, the one person who's definitely not going to be campaigning against that is, uh, is Prince Charles. But never mind, just very say, welcoming say someone did. Well, but, but I don't understand violence, your point. Yeah. Because the, for me, why I love Meghan and what she's doing in terms of female empowerment and actually What's highlighting it. What has she well, done? the fact that she's even talking about it. We never see a royal touch on these subjects. Not fair. Yes. Can, I interject? Yeah. Yes. Can I interject? By the way, I think you've gone a little bit overboard. I mean, my goodness me, this, uh, this lady, of course I welcome You're her arrival. You're just but jealous. No, 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 no. She's gorgeous. <laughs> she's but good hopefully, looking. hopefully she can fix she us is. to beat she the All Blacks in the rugby in the autumn international. Make sure it snows on Christmas Day and negotiate Brexit. I mean, oh, that's yes, about the only that thing you didn't put down. That's but it's not fair to say that. Let's see what the Duchess of Cornwall said uh, back in, uh, or Camilla Parker Bowles, as was in 2018. Uh, women of the World truly is a global festival dedicated to presenting work by women and promoting equality for women and girls. That's and indeed, not what Megan she's, said. No, no, she's president of the Women of the World Festival. You're making out that this is the first one. You actually said <laughs> brilliantly bold feminist speech. Well, that's a brilliantly no. bold... Not at feminist all. tweet from March this year on International Women's Day. She is great, but it's not like there's no one else there. Well, can I just bring in, because I totally disagree with you, Camilla, I love Camilla Parker Bowles, but her a little tweet does not compare in comparison to, to a two and a half to what, speech. To Meghan's wonderful feminist speech. And I'd like to show another clip from her, what she was talking about in terms of actually dealing with financial difficulties in her life. Can we have a look? I am also fully aware of the challenges of being able to afford this level of schooling for many people around the world, myself included. It was through scholarships, financial aid programs, and work study, where my earnings from a job on campus went directly towards my tuition, 
that I was able to attend university. And without question, it was worth every effort. This is, can I quickly just say that I hand over to you, Majid. This is someone who not only is in touch with the issues of the 21st century in terms of the women's movement and where we are right now yes. with it, but also someone who's in touch with real life struggles. I don't know any other world. Well, 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 over to you as someone who's time. friends well, with Megan. Well, well, I don't have friends. That's a, bit, that's a bit heavy. I wish I was, but actually having met her, I've got to say, I think we're oh. in danger. Oh. Oh. Having spent, <laughs> yes. having spent the an trouble evening. is you didn't know who she was. Having spent you? An, I'm going to tell that joke. You're stealing my thunder. Having spent an evening uh, dining with her and talking with her in Canada before anyone knew uh, that she was dating Prince Harry, uh, certainly before the announcement of the engagement. I, I think we're in danger of mixing two things up, and actually in both elements, uh, I want to in a gentler way agree with June, because that was a bit fawning, right? Yes. But actually in a gentler way. So first thing I'd say is the person as an individual, I think, needs to be separated from the symbol. What she symbolises for the nation, I agree, um, uh, it reflects a modern Britain, a monarchy that is um, comfortable with modern Britain. Mm. I, too, am in a mixed race A modern woman as well. I, too, am in a mixed race relationship with an American. Uh, increasingly, people are marrying across national borders and across ethnicities. Yeah. And I think that that marriage symbolises that and the fact that this country is comfortable with it. So that's what, the, what she symbolises. And, of course, part of what she symbolises is all of the class issues and but the But you accept she didn't do issues. that, the monarchy here allowed that's that to symbol. happen. That's a yeah. symbol, that's what I'm saying, a symbol yeah. of the nation, which is different. Well, she did it because she so, married so, him. So individually, I must say, having spent the evening talking to her, she's a wonderfully <laughs> oh dear. polite and lovely <laughs> person. <laughs> and the only reason I didn't ask for a number is I didn't think she, I didn't want her to think I was chatting her up, and so I didn't, she asked for I didn't know who she I, was. I, I, I don't think you'd have got I've had a cup of tea with Greg Dyke. She's a friend she's a very, very warm and welcoming person. and she's intelligent. She knew who she was at that time. She yeah, she was dating Harry, and yet she spent the evening talking to me no, without I, any pretext. I, I agree with you. I, 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 mean, I think yours was slightly over the top. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit fawning, wasn't it? I'm you know, you've already got your OBE. Yes, yeah, so no, no, I've got MBE. Oh, I'm sorry. You can go up from yeah, there. Yeah, can't you? Yeah. But no, I, but I do think... <laughs> She's a very different person. I mean, Princess Diana, who, as you say, did a great deal to change the monarchy, Everything. but she didn't. She came from the traditional background. Yes. This girl doesn't come from that background, no, and that. that's very good. And I'm not at all sure that you're right when you say that the, the palace allowed it or the. No, I, palace. Agree. I think. I agree. With I think he made the yeah. decision, not the yeah. palace. Yeah. Yeah. He's headstrong enough. Yeah. Yes, he, he, he made the decision. Up. To I do agree. what? Well, oh, to marry this her. This is who I marry. This is who I marry. Right, Whether totally you like, like yeah. take well, it or leave it. Of his mother. Yes. yes. You know? And yeah. if you don't like it, I'm off to Bermuda. Let's not hail her too early. She hasn't actually achieved it. Oh, yes, she can a string a sentence together. Beautiful. She's a very smart girl. She's a great communicator. I get all of that. Yes. I get it. But I'm not sure how many more walls there are to knock down. Diana knocked down most of the walls, actually. And, and the monarchy well, are helping No, but Diana knock down was never talking about women's issues and, in this. And Diana, she was talking and about... Diana knocked down a lot of the walls after. Yeah, they're about to... She talking about divorced. walls, they're about to have... That's, yes, that is absolutely true. Carol, yes. talking yes. about walls, though, they are about to have a child soon, and that child will be mixed race, and how that's going to have a whole bunch of new conversations going to be had. Mm -hmm about, you know, race relations, uh, diversity, uh, social cohesion, then, which are, at the moment, you can't deny, but heated then, debates, but again, which they will help calm, I think. But I say, you yeah. know, yes, she's saying this stuff, but the point is, should she be saying it? Because yes. of the monarchy status well, well, and being neutral. needs to come into the 21st century, and thank goodness yeah. they've what got to okay, something to do We should follow the, uh, the marriage over the years. <laughs> <I think. laughs> yes. But that's nearly it for this week. But before we go, there's just time for this. We all know footballers love a bit of attention and, and are partial to an unusual goal celebration. But Venezuelan footballer Eduardo Bello took things to another level this week. This is how he celebrated after scoring in the first minute for his side in the Chilean Premier Division. scores in more ways than one. <laughs> and for that, Eduardo Bello, you are our straight shooter of the week. Yeah. You, you do wonder what would have happened if, if he hadn't missed. Scored. If he exactly. missed. I mean, I've known strikers well, go a whole no, season yes. without scoring. Exactly. <laughs> one, he should have got a red card because he held up the game. B, I'm sorry to be rather brutal. 
where did he keep the ring? Yes. I mean, where, where, yeah. where did he have that in his purse? They would just run up the stairs. And also, and you, how many games has he been carrying the damn thing? Don't think you're being a bit of a killjoy. Who wants yeah. to be a tiger? Who wants to be proposed to? They'd have to wait for 83, 84 minutes left of the game or whatever it is. Just to... uh, okay, well, that's... 89. Okay, that's, that's, it. <laughs> that's it for this week's episode of The Pledge. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>